وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا Islam is the solution to the problems humanity faces. And this is just a small example. But I've done a lot of talking and I'd like to give everybody an opportunity to ask questions. So now you can put me at the hotspot. I asked you questions earlier, but look, I took it easy, right? Don't take it easy. Give me your hardest, right? So, I'm going to open it up to questions now. Uh, if there's non-Muslims with question, we'll give it preference, but otherwise everybody else can ask as well. Any questions? Nothing? You guys know everything about Islam already? Great. Utah is more knowledgeable than I thought. Amar, Max, anybody? All right, go ahead. Wa alaykum as salam Yes. Why are we not influencing our current system? Alhamdulillah, there's a lot of Muslims in, in the United States. Mm. What is, what is uh, preventing us? From that, is, that is a great question. Uh, let me repeat the question. Uh, we have in Islam a great system. A system that has been proven for over a thousand years. A system that even according to non-Muslims, as you saw, would solve the problems that society faces. Why are we not implementing them in our society? Right? The first problem we have is Muslims today are too quick to sell out on the religion. Too many Imams are like, say Bismillah, I need it. <laughs> and too many Imams are like, eh, it was okay. Eh, you know, it's haram, but we live in America. Well, if you keep making excuses like that, then you're not going to fix the system, right? That's the first problem. And too many Muslims, average Muslims, are fatwa shopping. They're just looking for a way to make haram halal, not realizing that haram will harm you. Allah didn't make something haram because it harms Allah. No, na'udhu billah. Allah, He is all powerful. Allah made things haram because they harm us. You know when you have fornication, like sex without marriage, what happens? STDs happen. Children not knowing their parents happens. Societal harm that we see. Look, people blame things without understanding the root causes. How many of you have heard about gun violence and the huge problem it is in the United States? Oh, come on, man. Everybody, Everybody right? You know of a country called Switzerland? You know, there are more guns in more households in Switzerland than the United States. That is true. I'll explain why. Even though we have more guns per capita, meaning if you average it out, but not every household in America has a gun. In Switzerland, by law, every household has a gun. So if you take households, then more households in Switzerland have guns than in the United States. Right? How many times have you heard of a school shooting in Switzerland? When is the last time a Swiss guy walked into a theater and shot it up? Right? So it's not the guns. Right? We have an issue in our society. We have taken the gender roles, gender roles and mixed them up. We have destroyed the structure of a family. We had a mother who was nurturing and caring and gave that that, that tarbiyah, as we, saw, we say, that upbringing to children, we said, no, 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 we want to free you. I don't know what that means. Right? We want you to leave those kids in daycare, in front of TVs, so total strangers can let them watch Tom and Jerry all day. That's a violent cartoon. <laughs> and I was raised on those kind of cartoons. And until I became a parent, I never thought about it. When I watched... Tom and Jerry's appearance, I was like, whoa, yeah, Allah. Man, that is violent, right? And that's what we want to do as a society. To take that wife and tell her, no, don't raise your children. What's the point in that? Well, this is the most critical aspect of a society. 
You know who has the most right upon you in Islam? It's your mother. Look at the honor Allah gave. Right? We took men, and instead of them being leaders and role models, we, we made them feminine. I told them, no. You know, you don't man's talk or mansplain or whatever. This weirdness that <laughs> try to explain. No man explain. I'm just explaining. It's not a man or woman explaining. <laughs> right? When we mess up these things in society, then we have these problems. So, we as Muslims need to stand up. We need to say, no more. No more selling out. No more making excuses. This is Islam. Quran, Sunnah, the way of the Salaf al-Ummah. This is our Islam. We're going to stick to it. Every modernist, compassionate imam can keep that stuff to themselves. We want to see evidence. Yeah? First, second problem. Those powers that be in the world that want to exploit the poor, that want to stay rich, those bankers that make money whether the market is up or down, those stockbrokers that make money whether you lost your life savings or not, they don't want to fix it. They make the bubble, make all their money, they pop the bubble, still make money, and get hired by the government to go fix the bubble. Come on, right? I mean, if you're a part of that 1% or whatever, yeah, you're living it up. But at what cost? Questions? Fadl. How can we make our youth proud of Islam? First and foremost, we have to practice Islam. If, if a dad's out there lighting up a cigarette, he can't really tell his son, don't smoke. Right? If the mom's not wearing hijab, she can't tell her daughter not to wear hijab. Set a good example. Right? Secondly, educate our youth. Why do you wear hijab? What are the benefits of hijab? What does Allah say about the hijab? That this is an honor for women. Honey, when we tell our young men, you know, why do you dress this way? Or why do you keep a beard? Or why do you do this? Explain why. When we pray, tell people, tell our children, what is the purpose of life? What are you here for? What's your goals? I mean, if your goal is to make money, become famous, be a TikToker, or whatever else, then what? If you make it, then what? Are you going to live forever? No, you're not. You're going to die. What happens after death? What's that TikTok going to do for you? What's that money going to do for you? What's that property going to do for you? Huh? You think any angel in the, in, the, in the grave is going to ask you your bank balance or your kill count? Or... No. In the end, it's going to be your amal, your actions. Your belief. What did you do to please Allah? And when you know that, and you stand on that, the honor will come. Questions? Sisters, no questions? Anybody else? Somebody over here? All right, we got two, so let's go ahead. Or whoever was first, go ahead. Excellent question. Excellent worship. Excellent question. So, when we say we believe and worship none but Allah. Can you repeat the question? I am, I am. Okay. I will. No problem. So, when we say that we worship none but Allah, the concept of Tawheed, that Allah is one, right? An objection sometimes is raised. Why do you pray facing the Kaaba? Is this not worshiping an idol? Great question. We, as Muslims, do not worship the Kaaba. We do not worship the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. We, as Muslims, even in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, our original Qibla was Jerusalem, was Quds. We used to pray facing Quds, until Allah ordered that you pray facing Mecca. 
right? And the Kaaba is the center of it. But these are directions of prayer. We don't pray to it. For example, here in America, we pray northeast. Does that mean that we worship the direction, northeast? No. Somebody who's west of the Kaaba may pray facing west. Does that mean they worship the west? No. Right? These are directions. And this is to show unity. Imagine if you were in a mosque and people were praying all different ways and bowing and bumping heads. Chaos. No, this is to unite our direction of prayer. We do not worship Hajar Aswad, we do the black stone, we don't worship the Kaaba, we do not worship Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. We worship none but Allah. We have in our prayer bowing, prostration, these actions facing the direction of the Kaaba. Even today, when we're sitting here, we don't have little idols of the Kaaba. No. Honey, we look towards which way is the Qibla, and even if you're a little bit off, as long as the general direction, your prayer is fine. But it unites the Muslim Ummah. No matter where you go, any mosque, where is the mosque and you're praying towards? Mecca. Right? In one direction. So this is not something we worship, but rather a direction we face. Go ahead. First of all, thank you for your time. Hayyakum Allah. Alhamdulillah. Also, um, the, the problems that we still face here, despite, you know, Islam and, you know, despite the fact that we have the solution. So, uh, what is something that us as Muslims could do, and then something also for the non Muslims to do leaving here today that we could do to at least try and help? Excellent question, and I'll repeat it. So, in summary, we focused about some of what Islam is first, and then what Islam brought to the heritage of humanity, and the problems we face and how Islam is the solution. But the question, an excellent question, is what can Muslims and non-Muslims that are here today do before leaving to solve it? Non-Muslims, you can become Muslim. This is the beginning, right? And for the Muslims, we can make a commitment that from today onwards, we are going to be a part of the solution to the society's problems. We are not going to shy away from discussing the problems we face as a society with drugs. We're not going to sweep it under the carpet. We're not going to just ignore the breakdown of the family structure. We're not going to be afraid to say that we don't agree with the LGBTQXYZ lifestyle. We're not going to be afraid to say that we as Muslims believe in the Sharia. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry guys, <laughs> this is the way I am, so, right? We're going to be real about it. We as Muslims are going to say, we are Muslim. We believe in the Quran. We believe in the Sunnah. We, we, we believe in the way of the Salaf al-Ummah. We believe in the Sharia. Ah. We believe that those laws revealed by Allah to His Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, for this humanity, not just for Muslims, but for all of humanity to live under, these are the best. This is what solves the problems we face. We need to be representatives of that. And when we as Muslims take on that task with da'wah, calling people towards it, with implementing it into our own lives, right? We're being ambassadors of Islam, then this is a part of the solution. Questions? Right. Uh, whatever religion they have. Yeah. So they don't want to read it. Like, you know, I already have my religion, I believe in it. Okay, I, I'm going to take the gift from him, but I'm not really going to read it. So I can convince them to like, actually learn more about their religion. Great question. How can we give da'wah to non Muslim acquaintances, classmates, neighbors? Um, because sometimes they're already practicing, practicing a different tradition, and they're not, they may accept it as a friend, but they're not really interested. Great question. First and foremost, by setting a good example. We as Muslims should set good examples. And we're all going to have shortcomings. I'm not saying you've got to be perfect, right? But we should set, to the best of our ability, a good example in our own dealings. 
Secondly, da'wah is not just giving a pamphlet. That's a part of it. Giving a book. So it's a beginning. But da'wah is engaging in conversation. Right? If you are, as I'm saying generally, not able to convey the message well, well, alhamdulillah, we record our da'wah. We have those videos online. You can watch them. And you can take notes. And you can learn. Or you can share those with non-Muslim friends, acquaintances, neighbors, classmates, whatever. And follow up with that. If somebody says, for example, if you tell somebody, what do you believe? And they say, I believe that this cow is God. Right? I've heard people worship cows. I've seen it. Right? You as a Muslim should engage with that. What do you mean? It's a cow. We make burgers, steaks, ribs. Right? It's tasty, but don't worship it. Right? Some people worship brats. Kind of nasty to me, but you know. Right? You should ask, did the rat create the universe? And then they might say, no, 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 we don't worship the rat. We're worshiping through the rat. It's kind of weird too, right? But then you tell them, well, who are you worshiping? God, why don't you worship God alone? Why you got to go to the rat? Pray to the one creator. That's what we do as Muslims, right? Some people may say, I think Jesus is God, right? We hear that a lot in America. Then you should ask them, who was Jesus worshiping? In the Christian Bible, we see Jesus put his forehead to the ground, worshiping God. So if he is God, who is he worshiping? If he wasn't God on earth, then he was no longer God. Is being a God something you can turn on and off? Is it like self-identify? Right? Engage. Have that conversation. Right? If Jesus was God, why would he ask God to take this cup away from me? I mean, if he's God, he could be like, yeah, you know what, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm off. I'm done. Right? God knows everything. In the Bible, we find verses where Jesus didn't know. Whether there was fruit on the tree, about the hour, right? So, engage in that. And explain Islam. Talk about it. Not just give a book, but talk about it. And then in the end, guidance is from Allah. Ma'alayna. It's not upon us, illa balagul mubin, except to convey the message clearly. So, questions? Go ahead. Um, I wonder if you could explain why do we separate men and women at the mosque and in Bible places, and then what, uh, what are the benefits you know, of modesty? Because, you know, is it a, a, an oppressive, oppressive thing, or are there benefits? Excellent question. Um, why do we separate between men and women, as we have here as well, and at the mosque and at Islamic events, and about modesty? Is modesty oppression, right? I'm pretty modest, and I don't think I'm oppressed, right? You didn't see me coming here in Speedos, right? Uh, you know, as Muslims, we believe in modesty. <laughs> you can't unsee that vision, right? Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. Now, right? As Muslims, first and foremost, we have to be real, right? Meaning we have to be honest. In America or in the Western society, we have a lot of hypocrisy, right? We say one thing, but we don't really mean it, right? Um, and again, for this answer, I'm going to be a little blunt, so if I offend anybody, eh, so what? So, when you look at society, there are genders, and there is attraction between the sexes, and that's a part of human nature. Right? That's the way Allah designed us. To deny that is to be dishonest. Right? So when you have somebody, and, and you know, when I was doing my master's, there was a lot of studies done on this, marketing studies. When you have an attractive female in a commercial, they know it will attract the attention of certain segments of men. They, they use it in marketing. That's why when they sell chewing gum, they have women in bikini. What does that have to do with chewing gum? Nothing. But they're using, they're misusing that woman's body as a means of trying to sell you something. Right? Many times they use the man in certain ways as well. If you read case studies that were done about cigarette companies, 
and how they would show these macho, well-built men and lighting up cigarettes on horses and cowboy hats. And the whole idea was to sell that image, right? Allah knows us and Allah knows us better than we know ourselves. So that creator, he ordained that when you pray, you pray separately. So now you can focus on your prayer. You're not sitting there going, ah, Allahu Akbar. Let me just, uh, you know, you're not trying to flex. You're not trying to show off because whether you say it or not, it's a part of human nature. Right? I used to go to church when I was younger. I didn't know at the time. And church, many of the churches that I went to, to be honest with you, were just places to show off. You would have your Sunday clothes and you would wear things that really weren't decent. Right? And you would try to be like, who's that? Oh, who's that new guy? Oh, who's that new girl? Oh, you know, let, let me go pray with you. Let's go outside to, you know. And, and this is, this is these are things that would happen. Right? And many, I would say, things that would even be against biblical teachings, relationships such happened through churches. Right? In Islam, we don't play with that. Look, you go to the mosque, go there to pray. Don't go there and try to find a wife or a husband or, you know, uh, these kinds of things. You go, you pray, you focus on your prayer. You're not worried about how you flex with people or show off to people. You're a woman, you go to the masjid, you go to the mosque, you're welcome. You pray with other women. You don't have to worry about is somebody looking when I'm bowing and praying. No, you pray at peace, right? That's how we do it. Modesty is not oppression. Modesty is freedom, Right? If you think about it, if I came in here and said, everybody, you have to strip down, right? You would be like, no, you're crazy, right? And if I forced it on you, this would be an oppression on you, right? Now, when you clothe yourself and you cover that which may attract people, except in front of your spouse or your family where you're not worried about that, that is your freedom now. You're protected from the gaze or eyes or the evil of those that may mean to do you harm. But when you are with those that you are safe, you have that freedom. That's freedom, right? Now, I will end that with another point as well, inshallah. When we have a Muslim sister, as our Muslim sisters, mashallah, dressed modestly in the correct Islamic way, when they speak, we pay attention to their intelligence, to the words coming out of their mouth, with, their, with their, the, the value that their brain and their ideas are bringing. That's reality, right? Women that are not dressed properly, that are dressed indecently, right? that are dressed in ways that human biology and psychology will tell you, that the tension is not going to their mind, to their spirituality, to the words coming out of their mouth. They're being judged by their measurements, right? This is a misuse. This is oppression. This is filth. And then we see the Me Too movement. Then we see harassment and rape rates across. Not that it's the woman's fault, right? A man should always control himself. But Knowing society, right? If, I mean, let's be honest. Like I said, I like to be honest. If I go down, uh, Utah is pretty safe, so I can't give you an example here, but I will take California, right? Let's say I go down to South Central Los Angeles or Compton or East Los or Logan Heights or whatever bad neighborhood you can think of, and I go out there with $20,000 cash, 10,000 in this hand and 10,000 in this hand. And I'm running around alleyways in the dark night at 2 a.m. going, hey, I got 20,000, woohoo, right? And I get robbed, <laughs> right? Now, does that mean they should have robbed me? No, it's still illegal. But the cops might tell me, you idiot, <laughs> what the hell were you doing? <laughs> You're partially responsible because you were putting yourself in a situation that put you in harm's way. If a police officer sees me running around Compton in the alley at 2 a.m. with 20,000 in cash, he's going to turn to light. What are you doing? Get out of here. Right? Do I tell the police officer, how dare you? They're oppressing me. My freedom. 
And if I did, and then I got robbed, the cop would be like, see, told you. Right? So we have to take measures to prevent. Right? As a man, I have my own modesty. As a woman, you have your own modesty. What are the limits of modesty? We do not set that. Allah sets it. He's our creator. What he set, he knows better than us. And we live by that. More questions? Or are we? That's one last one. Okay, one, last one. one last one. Make it good. Fadal. Actually, I think Max had one. No? It's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll take yours too. Don't worry. Go ahead. Great question. Um, the question is that there are gender roles, as he, we agreed, and then uh, somebody should be there to take care of the kids and to raise the kids. And could those gender roles be reversed? Could a man stay home and a woman go work? So the first thing is, in Islam, we do allow that women could work. We're not saying that it's haram mutlaqan, yani absolutely forbidden for a woman to work, no. But there are some rules and regulations that go with that, right? Just like a man. A man can work, but he has rules and regulations. He can't go to work to be a robber or a bank thief or work at a strip bar or a, or a bank with riba and things like this. Right? We have rules for men and we have rules for women within which they can work. Right? But the reality is the nurture that a woman can provide a child, a man cannot. This is psychology. You can go study it. You can look it up. You can see the studies that have been done. The patience that women have with their children, Allah knows, I got four kids, right? That I don't, right? And I'm saying this as admitting a shortcoming of a man, as a man. We as men generally, and again, this is obviously when you talk about genders or we have to generalize, right? In psychology, whether you study uh, any which way, they are not as adapt to dealing with children and nurturing them and naturing them as women are, right? Now, there might be situations where a woman will have to go and work and the man may not be able to. That is true, right? And that could happen. And there are situations in the Muslim Ummah where I've seen that. But the general rule is not that, right? The general way of society and of nature and of Islam is the woman, she raises the children. And men, they go out and they bring in the sustenance. That's the way it's been, right? We can deny that all we want, right? But even if you go to how the structure of a man is made, right? Broader shoulders usually, right? The structure, it's meant for harder work, for farming and hunting. And this is how humans were developed, right? To deny that is to deny the nature of man. And the woman's body, obviously, if you, Max, Stay home as a stay home dad. Are you going to breastfeed the child? <laughs> right? <laughs> Good point. Right? So you're going to have to find unnatural ways now and, you know, get some simulac from Abbott and, you know, right? Because you're, you're going against the natural roles. Right? Go ahead. I told you I'll take yours. So sorry, Sheikh. No, no, He's just asking more of a suggestion. So we all know. Hmm. What is your suggestion how Muslim kids should act with these kind of people? Great question. How should we act with uh, people that are promoting uh, gender roles to be not what your biological gender is or you know, saying that LGBTQ, XYZ, infinity sign are all a part of the nature of man? We need to educate our kids. We need to te talk to them and teach them that no. Look, human biology. Let, I'll give you an example, right? What's your name? Nasser. Nasser. The reality of life is someday we all die, right? So let's say Nasser, me and you are dead. May Allah give you a long religious life, but someday we're going to be dead. And we are in a grave. And a thousand years from now, some archaeologist digs us up, and he finds me and you, and he finds our structure, right? 
bone structure, everything, right? What do you think they're going to say about me and youth gender? <gasps> How dare they assume my gender? <laughs> that archaeologist? How dare he assign that? Why? <laughs> because you are a male. There's parts of your body, the structure of your body, the makeup of your... From your bone structure, we can tell you're a male. That's what you are. You can call yourself anything you want. I could tell you I'm a pink unicorn. I could. How dare you guys laugh at me. <laughs> right? From now on, I want you to address me as a pink unicorn. <laughs> you could, but you're not. Right? That's the reality. Right? If humanity as a whole went homosexual, as a whole, what would happen to our species? End. It would end. end. What is the core biological purpose of any species? It's to reproduce, to keep the species going. Right? What does that tell you? I'm not even bringing religion into this. Nature tells you that it's supposed to be a man and woman. And that's how humanity flourishes. Right? That's reality. We need to talk to our kids straight. We can't be ashamed. We have rights. Allah gave us those rights, right? We're going to speak the truth. You want to counsel me? Go ahead. Don't care. I'm still going to speak the truth. Why? Because it's the truth. If you want a discussion, we can sit down and discuss. No problem. Yeah. But the reality is, if you take any religious tradition, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, or you take nature and the way humans are structured to begin with, that the marriage is man and woman. That is it. That's it. Khalas. Max, you good? No more? All right. So we appreciate uh, everybody. You got anything? Good? Sisters? No questions? MashaAllah. I really appreciate everybody coming out. I especially want to thank uh, Sheikh Abi Abdullah uh, for inviting me and the university and all the students. And uh, I want to say uh, that I hope that the discussion that we had today, the question and answer and the presentation, will steer some uh, thought that you will actually, as Muslims that are here, that you will actually contemplate on what you need to do as a Muslim in your da'wah and promoting the da'wah and, and being a part of the solution to the society that we live in. And as non-Muslims that are here, that you will think about Islam being that solution to your question of why are we here? What's the purpose of life? Who created us? We cannot just follow something because it's what our family does. If your family raised you believing two and two is five, that doesn't mean it is. We cannot just take society and the culture that we live in to be the norm and say that's what it is. No, we have to ask ourselves, what is the true message of God to us? And then think, is the Bible that you study today the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Gitas and Virdas and Hinduism, are these truly from God Himself? As the Qur'an is? And if you don't have a Qur'an, as a non-Muslims, we would love to give you a free copy. We have pamphlets and books. We have refreshments. Please feel free. And if you have any question that you are shy to ask in front of everybody, I'll be at the side to ask for you to ask. Wajazakumullahu khairan. لا بد يوما آتية كل الخلائق حاضرة كل السرائر بادية آمنت أن الآخرة لا بد يوما آتية كل الخلائق حاضرة كل السرائر بادية